మహోన్నతుడు అయిన మా ప్రియ పరలోక తండ్రి నీ నామంకి వేలాది వందనాలయ్య గడిచే వారం అంత మమ్మల్ని కాచి కాపాడి మరి ఒకసారి మరి ఒక మంగళవారం రోజు ఈ కోరిక కోరిచ్చినందుకు వేలాది వందనాలయ్య ఈ ఈ ఆ వారం రోజుల్లో మీ ఏమేమి జరిగినా మీకు తెలిసే ఉన్నా నాలుగు రోజుల నుంచి పిల్లలకి బాగాలేదు బట్ వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళకి ఉన్న అనారోగ్యం తీసేసి ఆరోగ్యం దయచేసి వేలాది వందనాలయ్య మేము ఇక్కడ కూడుకొని మీ మా వాక్యం ధ్యానం చేస్తున్నాము కదా ప్రభు మాకు అదంతా అర్థమయ్యి మేము పాటించేటట్టుగా చేయమని నా చిన్న ప్రార్థన ఆలోచించమని మా పేపర్లో కొత్త పేరిట అడిగి వేడుకుంటున్నాము తండ్రి ఆమె uncle uh, the lyrics should i put it or will you put it what what will lyrics uncle lyrics uh, uh, you want uh, so shall i sh- make you the okay baby only sing no no problem don't worry about the lyrics just sing okay okay fine so uh, the first <coughs> song is everlasting god Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. You reign forever. I hope. A strong deliverer, you are the everlasting God, the everlasting God, the dawn of faith, you won't go away. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. You reign forever. I hope. Our strong deliverer, you are the everlasting God, the everlasting God, you do not fail. Are the defender of the weak, comfort those in need, lift us up like eagles. Thank you. 
God. You do not fade. You are the defender You comfort those in need. Because That was wonderful. Hello? Yeah, listening to you, Ruth. That was wonderful. Yeah. One done? song for today. Yeah. Okay, one song. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So, uh, last time, what did we look at? Uh, do you all have an idea about what we looked at? Uh, can we just have a quick recap? You know, what did we look at? Mm. Yes. Ten blanks. Anybody has an idea? What did we look at? Quickly. Uh, we have gone through the book of Exodus. Uh, it is like uh, abbreviation. E means uh, X and uh, O D S. And okay. then we, we went through a book of numbers. Okay. And okay. then uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, numbers and Deuteronomy. That's it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, so, uh, right. So then we move ahead. And uh, today we will cover till Second Chronicles and quickly we will end, uh, you know, uh, you know, because you are all uh, not well and also, you know, tired. So I think all of us uh, today, you know, we'll just run through all the books of the Bible and um, uh, till Second Chronicles and I think it will be a real help. Okay, now, uh, talking about, we finished till, till Deuteronomy, right? Yes. So now, uh, the next book is about Joshua. Okay, now, uh, the thing about Joshua is that uh, uh, that uh, it's all about, uh, you know, Joshua uh, leading the people into the land of Canaan. So it's talk about, it talks about his leadership, okay? And uh, the role he played, the mighty role that he played in order to, you know, uh, keep the whole process of, uh, finish the entire plan of God, which he started right when they came out of Egypt. Okay. Now, uh, I'll tell you something very uh, interesting. I hope... Uh, I'm, I'm uh, telling this for the first time to you. It's like this. Okay. Now, Joshua is a copy of Moses. Okay. He was actually an uh, assistant of Moses. He used to wait upon Moses. He used to follow Moses very closely. Did I tell you all this? Did I tell you or am I telling for the first time? First time. Oh, no, you told us, uncle. Uh -huh. I told you. No, last time you discussed about Joshua and you related uh, like Jesus. Yes, Uncle, you told this also, Uncle, like uh, uh, Joshua is like exactly like Moses. He's just, whatever you said, you told it then, Uncle. Okay, okay, fine. So uh, that's what I was thinking, you know, that's what and I then wanted. Judges also, you said seven judges stories. Uh, so story, did, did any homework? Did anybody do the homework of judges and all? No, no. Ten plagues. Are uh, ten plagues and judges? Okay, Ruth has done it. So I did Ruth, the ten plagues only. Oh, ten plagues only. Can you tell us the ten plagues in order? The two she did the one day batting. She was just uh, memorizing <laughs> just before, half an hour before. I yeah, was that's reading. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Ruth. I appreciate your homework, really. That shows that you are a student. That's very good. Go ahead. First is blood. Okay. Second, frogs. Third is nets. Fourth is, is flies. Oh. Livestock. Boils. Okay. Okay. Hail. Okay. Uh, then I think it's darkness. Okay. Darkness. Uh, 
darkness it, and then the death of the first child first of the, no no it's locusts then darkness then the first born death of the first born that's the last plague wonderful can we give a good clap to her wonderful wonderful that's it that's it anybody read about judges uh, how many judges are there in the book of 12 12 very good and anybody can list the name of the 12 judges please no i didn't okay. i think yeah. i can anybody no okay no neil a hood okay okay any one judge can you tell any one or three gideon gideon samson okay jay uh, like lady judge uh, lady judge who's the lady judge debora debora very good okay and then uh, uh, any judges which you are not very familiar like most of them othniel is one judge othniel anybody remember that slightly past we heard in okay the fine so there are a lot of judges you know uh, there are 12 judges a total of 12 judges othniel is one of them uh, so there is jephtha you might have heard about jephtha the story of jephtha is very interesting you uh, know he had to sacrifice his own daughter okay so read the story of jephtha it's very interesting who is the last judge who is the last samson. judge samson 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 beautiful beautiful okay so we are done with the book of judges and now uh, let's uh, go to the next book so what is the next book it is about ruth right right am i right yes or no yes uncle okay right now ruth uh, you know the uh, just uh, again uh, the book is uh, revolving around a gentile woman okay who was chosen by god she is a completely a gentile woman she is from the land of moab moab okay and moab is a cursed land um, because moab has got the history of the sin of abraham's nephew lot okay lot uh, uh, he was alone left uh, uh, you know with his two daughters and uh, so the generation was out of a sinful act of lot and that's why it was cursed by god so moab was a cursed place okay and uh, bethlehem the uh, the name of bethlehem uh, it's it's translated as house of bread okay so uh, now when there was famine in bethlehem uh, naomi that is the mother in law of ruth she uh, migrates to moab okay and this is why she migrates because there's famine uh, now the, uh, the moment she migrated and she left uh, the land of israel and went into the land of moab she also get, got hit with the curse that was in moab so the her husband died and her two sons died so there is a lesson to all of us sometimes our decisions you know uh, to move away from god and the house of god will cost us a lot okay. remember one thing there is a very big message over here saying that you must not leave the house of god even if there is famine sometimes you may see darkness sometimes you may see your prayers not getting answered sometimes there may be some some kind of uh, god may be taking you through a period of test but still don't ever leave the house of god you know for example uh, i'll give you a simple example <coughs> excuse me i'll leave, i'll give you a simple example see uh, today morning i had a chat with my assistant pastor okay uh, in uh, uh, bangalore and uh, one of the family to whom uh, uh, this uh, family was closely related to uh, related to me in one sense that uh, that lady she, and uh, she was demonized okay so when i went uh, to my church uh, in uh, bangalore in electronic city i casted out that demon that was in this lady and before casting out okay i asked the demon what are you doing in this house so the demon replied saying i am stopping this uh, woman's uh, baby uh, and i am killing the woman's baby so then i casted out the demon 
so uh, then i asked them sing, saying uh, since how long you are not having a baby so sh- they told us they told me that since 7 years and uh, the the woman had three abortions and uh, since 7 years they were not having baby so uh, then i laid my hands on them and i blessed them and i said no more because the demon is casted out you will get the baby now i blessed her and then uh, she conceived that same month she conceived which was confirmed after 3 months okay and uh, uh, the woman and the uh, husband were very happy and they gave birth to this baby and i went to our church uh, in electronic city i dedicated the baby when after uh, that baby was one and a half year old i dedicated the baby i named the baby as uh, rachel okay and uh, these people were walking very well with god in our church and uh, suddenly today morning i had a discussion with my pastor so my pastor was telling uh, telling uh, my spiritual son was telling saying that pastor uh, this lady is uh, and uh, her husband is moving out of bangalore and uh, they want to settle in their village so i asked him for what purpose so he said that there is uh, uh, they want to claim their land and they want to buy that land and uh, they want to be in that village uh, because of the property so i looked at uh, my pastor and i told please inform them that uh, in that village there is no church there is no fellowship and if they leave uh, bangalore and the house of god and go back to a place which is dry which is where there is no church they will very soon backslide in order to just get a land of uh, you know on this earth they may lose the land that is in heaven so this is the advice i gave you this is a classic example to quote to you you know why because sometimes uh, you know in order for our uh, future ambition or whatever you know sometimes we take the wrong decisions wrong decisions to go in, into cursed places so uh, never choose a cursed place never uh, you are all youngsters don't choose a place where there is no god where there is no church where there is no fellowship where there is no hope you know lot of people do that mistake there, there, are, there are many people who do that mistake just because of career or this that or ambitions or this that they go to a very dry place and uh, they go to a the sinful place and the influences of that place it 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 uh, makes you uh, become like the, the the people living there and uh, ultimately you will you end up very bad uh, one classic example from the scripture is about uh, loth himself till the time he was with abraham he was all right but when he left abraham and he chose to go into the land of sodom and gomorrah that's where is is uh, backsliding and his end started to happen when he went into the land of sodom and gomorrah the people were so evil that a land full of homosexuals and in fact they wanted to have relationships with the angels who came to deliver lot and it was so pathetic you know that finally it it impacted lot's daughters so much that they had to sin with their uh, with that most terrible sin on earth and the result is uh, the tribe of moab so uh, my dear friend uh, remember one thing okay that uh, don't leave the house of bread don't leave the house of god you know uh, whenever once you have received jesus christ always even if you get very good proposals see to it that you will have a spiritual place uh, a church or a fellowship or a proper culture in the new place that you are moving to and that way you will be protected so this is what happened to uh, naomi she left to moab and she lost everything but uh, see even in our tragedies god is not done with that wow that's a beautiful story of naomi uh, the book of ruth even in our tragedies god is not done with us hallelujah can we all raise up a hand and say amen can can amen. we all raise up a hand say amen and that's that's how beautifully she repents and she repents and she says i i want to go back to bethlehem and that's the time god gave to ruth because she was a naomi because she was a spiritual child god gave to naomi a beautiful daughter in law called ruth and uh, this woman 
class. I tell you, she was a classic woman. You know, at a young age, she lost her husband. And uh, maybe she might have lived for with him for a couple of months. And she lost and now she's a widow. But still, she's very young. She can. She could have gone back to her mother's place. And she would have chosen a better life there. But she said, no, I will be with you. And uh, where you go, I will be go there. And where you live, I will live there. Where you die, I will die there. And she came along with, you know, her uh, mother-in-law to the land of Israel. And this is a beautiful thing that uh, Naomi picturizes the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, that is, she metaphorically uh, represents the Holy Spirit. Ruth represents, uh, represents the sinner and the future husband of Ruth, uh, that is Boaz, he represents the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, metaphorically, not exactly, but in, in a, in a, in a like a prototype sense. Okay. Now this is what happened. Uh, Naomi advised to Ruth, go to the fields of Boaz. He's a relative, work there. And she went and stayed close in the fields of Boaz. When Boaz was a very generous man and a very kind and compassionate man, he looked at Ruth and he uh, took care of Ruth. And when the time came, Naomi suggested another thing. He said, go and ask him to adopt you. Go and ask him to uh, bring uh, into his shelter because the Torah says that if there is no relative, the closest kinsman will redeem the relative who has lost his own family. So Boaz becomes the redeemer. Like Jesus Christ also, he redeems us. He owns us when we came to him. So it, it represents like that. Boaz came and he redeemed Ruth. Okay, it's a, it's a big process. Uh, he fought with the other uh, person who was uh, ready to... Uh, uh, there was another relative who was actually supposed to redeem Ruth. Uh, sorry, Naomi and Ruth. But that relative backed off, okay, because he didn't want to share the problems of Naomi and Ruth. So Boaz agreed to take up all the responsibility of Naomi and Ruth and he married Ruth. And that's where uh, the generation of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Ruth was brought into the generation of Jesus Christ. God is so merciful when we repent. Hallelujah. That shows... God is amazing. Ruth gave birth to a child called Obed. Obed gave birth to a child called Jesse. And Jesse gave birth to a child called David, whom we know as a shepherd boy who became king. So Ruth was the great, uh, Naomi was the great grandmother of the great king David. And Ruth was the grandmother of the great king David. So uh, it's a wonderful thing to know uh, God's mighty works. Okay. Then uh, we see that uh, David gave birth to uh, uh, Nathan and Nathan, uh, yeah, there was a, not the prophet Nathan, don't get confused with the prophet Nathan. Read the book of Matthew, first chapter, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, child called Nathan and David gave, in the generation of David, Nathan came and Nathan uh, uh, in the generation of Nathan, uh, Mary was born. So, and uh, from Mary, Jesus Christ. So, directly Ruth came into the genealogy of Jesus Christ after 1,000 years. After 1,000 years, she came into the genealogy as the mother of Jesus. Oh, wonderful end, beautiful end. Okay. In fact, uh, Naomi means, uh, the meaning of Naomi is sweet. Okay. It, it means sweetness. And when she returned to Israel, she returned during the time of the harvest. And everybody looked at Naomi and said, Naomi has come back. So she said, don't call me Naomi. I'm not Naomi. I'm not sweet anymore. I am Mara. That means bitter. And God changed Naomi's future from Mara again to sweetness. So the ladies told this word about Naomi. They said, they said to Naomi, Naomi, your daughter-in-law who is Ruth is equal to 10 sons. Oh my God. Just imagine. Just imagine. It, 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 it really blows my mind to see what kind of hardworking woman Ruth was. She, the, the, the women of that place, 
they compared one lady Ruth to ten sons. Ten sons, my God, <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, I, I wish all the ladies in this room will be called like that, equal to ten sons. My God. <laughs> Okay, only one name. Anybody is saying name? You are listening or you are all slept? No, I am listening. I am here. Fine. Okay, Amen. So may you be equal to ten sons. So we are done with the book of Ruth. It's about the Gentile being adopted into God's family. That's beautiful. Okay. Now we enter into the book of One Samuel. One Samuel is all about the prophet Samuel. Okay. Now, uh, uh, as the judges were gone, God raised up a prophet, okay, through a barren woman, okay, called Hannah. God raised up a prophet. And this prophet's duty was to, he was a kingmaker. That means uh, he, he would anoint kings, okay, and he would guide Israel. So how beautiful it is that God sends us people who guide us from time to time. You know, I'll tell you, a beautiful uh, illustration to explain this. When I was in Chennai, I was got, uh, I was alone, and God sent me a prophet called uh, Manoj Samuel. Even today, is one of my closest friend. Even today, and uh, very sweet guy, and uh, uh, he's a prophet. And uh, you know, when I needed guidance, God sent me to him. I was under, under his ministry for a long time. Then I moved to Bangalore and for a short time, I did not have anybody to guide me. God sent me that time a man called uh, uh, Dhana Singh, A. Dhana Singh, a Tamilian, a Bible teacher. I had a very beautiful relationship with uh, Dhana Singh uncle. Even today with Dhana Singh and Rachel auntie, I'm grateful to them for the way they invested in our family. Beautiful. God sent them to us. And uh, after Dhana Singh, uh, I moved out from that area where he was living. Then God sent to me, uh, yeah, before Dhana Singh, God sent me uh, another lady called Bala Samson. Amazingly, she contributed in my life. Even today, you know, just today morning, I had a uh, chat with her husband, Samson. And amazingly, she led us in warfare prayers, in, in uh, fasting, in casting out demons. She really taught us a lot of stuff. She guided us. Then after Bala Samson, Dana Singh, after Dana Singh, I had a Pastor Prem to guide me, uh, who was a pastor in FGG Church uh, as my spiritual mentor. And uh, also Pastor Prakash. These are the people who God, God guided me. And when I came to Hyderabad, now God is guiding me through another pastor called Pastor Ben of Hope UC. All these are my mentors. So God always kept somebody to prophesy, to guide in my life. In the same way, see, uh, don't think that uh, I came by accident uh, to meet you all. It's not an accident. It is God's plan. You know, he has brought a guide into your life who can guide you in the spiritual way. If only you believe that, you will listen to your guide. You will listen to your mentor. And you will follow and obey your mentor. And God will have a great plan. Uh, maybe for some time he will use me. But after some, after my work is over, somebody will come like that. God will keep sending you uh, teachers and people who will prophesy, who will mentor, who will guide you on a constant basis. Okay. And uh, I forgot the contribution of Reverend uh, Shaiju Matthew also for a short time. Maybe some three, four, uh, no, no, maybe for a year right two three years he was uh, with us guiding us uh, i'm sorry for that because it's on uh, record uh, two three years he guided us tremendously uh, before he left for canada so uh, all these are our wonderful teachers you know and they didn't come all of a sudden for me they came one after the other they didn't come at the same time one went, another came, one went, another came. All, all were walking in with God's grace. So that is the grace of God. And I believe that if God starts a work in your life, you will do the same thing. So with Israel, God sent them this prophet first Samuel in First Samuel, who anointed, who anoints two kings 
one is saul and another is david okay quickly i will end here saul was a king whom the people wanted and david is a king whom god wanted that's all period that is the simplest way to explain this saul was a king whom the people wanted david was a king whom god wanted okay so that also shows volumes of teachings to us now we come into we are done with the book of 1 samuel we come into the book of 2nd samuel now the 2nd samuel book is about david's son uh, solomon okay and now uh, uh, solomon is anointed as king by david his father and david rules uh, it also talks about david okay uh, david rules for 7 years uh, in juda okay Bef and for another 33 years he rules as king in jerusalem so there were two divisions of israel okay in those days one is juda with two tribes okay benjamin and one more tribe and the remaining 10 tribes uh, were uh, of uh, israel so there were two portions okay uh, that is after solomon of course but uh, even in those times there were two divisions so david ruled in juda for two tribes for 7 uh, years later on for 33 years he was anointed king as israel of israel it's like this andhra is divided into two right telangana and andhra pradesh okay now that's why we both very often fight with each other okay i i tell her that you andhra fellows are very clever mischievous okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so and then uh, she hits back at me about telangana people and all that okay so i don't know if there's there's a kind of fight happening with you all there is there kind of situation happening like that anyone <laughs> or all of you are in telangana all of mom and dad have it mom and dad <laughs> <laughs> No, but Baba and Dada both are Telangana, no? Right? No, no. Mama is Andhra, Dada is Telangana. Oh, Mama is Andhra. Ah, that's why I don't speak to Ruth in Telugu. Ah, uh, if she starts speaking Telugu, uh, I'll fall down and uh, have to roll down also. But I don't like the way she talks in Telangana. Oh, that happens with Nana also, uncle. Yeah. Dad also he does. <laughs> why he cuts talking in any Telangana slang? It's like. <laughs> First watch this slang, then talk to me. <laughs> okay. So ju just like that, Israel was divided into two. Okay. So southern kingdom, northern kingdom. Okay. Same Israel, but divided into two. But just imagine that if only one chief minister was being accepted in Telangana and also in Andhra, that is what happened with David. He was accepted in Judah. and he was also accepted in jerusalem okay so in both the places he was accepted as king i told this to explain to you how david got the uh, faith of uh, what he called both the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom juda and jerusalem okay uh, so after that so uh, this united kingdom david was uh, the king of the united kingdom so that is both is jerusalem and uh, juda put together united kingdom uh, david was the king of uh, united kingdom for 40 years 33 years in jerusalem 7 years in juda okay then now whatever he earned uh, solomon now started to rule and uh, god said to david you can't build my temple because your hands are with blood so better solomon so but david gave the money for that and all the gifts for that gold and everything solomon built the temple excellent guy and uh, his prayer i think was the most greatest prayer uh, that teaches us uh, that when we ask god for something we need to be very wise god gives all of us an option to ask and it depends on what we should ask and when god said to solomon ask he asked for wisdom and because he asked wisdom he got along with wisdom wealth 
okay so remember to be very wise to ask god the right thing don't ask for pencil chocolate biryani uh, one plate of chow mein don't ask all that you know ask god for the right choices you know uh, in fact the best choice that god uh, solomon teaches us to ask god for wisdom wisdom will automatically attract wealth okay so wealth and favor will come through wisdom so don't ask god even for wealth because if you get wealth you may not get wisdom also so solomon asked for wisdom he got wealth and favor so he rules for 40 years okay solomon also rules rules uh, the united kingdom for 40 years and uh, 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 what happens is that he, this guy has a weakness of women okay he has thousand wives maybe so many we don't know as a king uh, all his wives led him to uh, what he called uh, marry uh, so uh, worship the other gods okay it's very interesting to note that wives can be a problem sometimes <laughs> no i'll tell you why no i have a point for them they are not small children okay they are big children okay i have uh, something because adam and eve no wife is a problem there <laughs> just joking okay so eve led adam you know to sin in the same way solomon also his wife forced him to worship the other gods okay and that's where uh, uh, he just lost uh, uh, god's grace and everything which david earned it completely backslid okay he completely lost now another sin that solomon did was that god asked uh, solomon never to go back to the root of egypt in fact it's a permanent commandment to all israel move forward but don't go backward don't go back to the root of egypt and this is what solomon did is that he went and he purchased horses from egypt which god did not like okay and because god did not like any association with egypt okay that god hates it's the same thing with you and me okay don't go backwards in your spiritual life try to move only forward okay don't go back to your old ways of you know the before salvation you know think about going forward okay that should be your goal and purpose okay so jokes apart now solomon uh, is lost the grace of god so god tears the kingdom united kingdom god tears it into 12 pieces and uh, 10 pieces he gives off to uh, some other king and you know one piece uh, 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 two pieces he leaves off to david so david's uh, line okay descendants okay now the 10 pieces are the northern kingdom and the two pieces that is the two tribes are the southern kingdom okay so now united kingdom again got divided into northern kingdom and southern kingdom this is very important for you to understand okay two kingdoms now uh, during solomon's reign reign because of his sin northern kingdom 10 kingdom got split the whole uh, thing and punished solomon for his sin now after the sin of solomon israel couldn't recover for a very long time in fact uh, they were on and off in the northern kingdom they were very evil kings terrible wicked means wicked kings who only sacrificed uh, human beings to other gods worshiped idols uh, and did all kinds of sins in the northern kingdom and southern kingdom was slightly better uh, kings they had in that you can see jehoshaphat uh, you know josiah and uh, asa and all this so there were certain kings who were really very good in the southern kingdom next class i will teach you about the names of those kings and what all it happened okay now uh, right so are you with me i hope all of you are with me right yes pastor am i boring you all no no it's very interesting pastor okay so uh, you right now you have an idea right uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom okay pastor so have, yeah where are Tell the 10 tribes pastor 
what is it where are the 10 tribes now uh they are all there now in israel you know most of even some tribes even were found in india do you know that in mizoram the tribe of ephraim was found <laughs> okay so okay so it's like that you know uh okay now fine now very quickly let me tell you okay some of the good kings in uh, the land of uh, judah you know i think Je uh, 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 what do you call uh, hezekiah was one of the most classiest uh, king jehoshaphat in uh, judah uh, jehoshaphat you know hezekiah and uh, josiah the and and these were the uh, three kings who were really after god's heart but they tried to do good but even then you know whatever solomon and uh, did you know it was become a total mess and god couldn't still forgive the sins of the people so even though these three kings that is uh, in the in judah which is judah is the southern kingdom uh, even if, though jehoshaphat and hezekiah and josiah were really kings like david uh, still god couldn't forgive the sins of uh, the southern kingdom and the southern kingdom was attacked by babylon uh, god gave them into the hands of babylon whose king was nebuchadnezzar so nebuchadnezzar came and conquered the southern kingdom okay and uh, he took uh, the entire southern kingdom as captive okay now the northern kingdom that is the kingdom of israel uh they had all evil kings you can see the names of these evil kings were uh they were like uh, jehu was one of them uh jeroboam jeroboam was the most wicked king uh in the northern kingdom very evil fellow and uh, you have others like shalom uh menahem and pika all these were uh, different people i'll give you a list of it on the whatsapp later on okay so during this uh, time god also sent two prophets mighty prophets to uh, still guide the people you know in this very dark situation where the kings were very evil god sent some prophets who really contributed a lot and out of those prophets we have uh, elijah and elisha who were fabulous prophets during those days uh, it shows us something uh, sabita just put the charger on uh, one just hold on one minute so it shows to us that god still has not given up on us and uh, just one minute hold on okay yeah it over somehow it shows to us that uh, god still is not given up with us uh, anyhow and uh, he still is uh, gracious to us and the more sin abounds the more grace abounds so at one side sin was abounding at another side god's grace through these prophets elijah and elisha and aisha and jeremiah all these people the great prophets even daniel uh, they came to prophesy to the people and guide them and pray them and try to restore but still how much ever they tried because of the sin of solomon and jeroboam things were becoming very worst and worst okay uh, but still god was gracious so we are done with the book of second samuel now uh, we are entering into the book of uh, first chronicles okay very quickly about first chronicles i will tell you that uh, the book of chronicles is actually uh, the meaning of the book of chronicles is the acts of the days okay that's the meaning of this so it mentions about genealogies and it talks about the preparations for the temple so uh, we see that in the book of chronicles uh, we see uh, david setting up the temple with the different musicians and uh, like symbols and people who are there he had a team of people leading uh, in the trumpets he had a team in symbols he had a team in blowing the horns so he had a wonderful team whom he set up as a choir to worship the lord okay take your note he had a wonderful oh sorry sorry you can't do it 
she had a wonderful team uh, to worship the lord in the choir okay so that's about second chronicles and uh, sorry first chronicles now the second chronicles also it talks about the construction of the temple the the way the temple was managed and the way uh, the sacrifices of the temple and the details of the temple same david story not exactly but about david, about david it talks about and uh, this temple actually uh, connects to the future new jerusalem which is going to come on earth okay so everything is prophetic so we are finished till second chronicles okay na? so thank you for a wonderful time uh, connecting with you all okay and also uh, talking to you all and may god bless you all and today we sign off early okay god bless you it was wonderful so try to read these books you know it's very interesting judges, judges. Uh, judges uh, try to get a list of judges, judges stories judges all the stories, all the stories. Uh, please coming week try to read all the judges coming week i will tell you what are the kings of uh, both the kingdoms northern southern kingdom and how evil they did what are the sins they did all that i will explain to you it's very beautiful and how david worshiped and who were the mighty men of david david had some mighty men absolutely a great team i pray god will also give us a team like that in our ministry amen a mighty men david had in that three people were super strong they even broke through the enemy camp in order to get water for david it's a beautiful story in first chronicles you can see that okay so we will discuss that coming week god willing okay then we will go to the prophets and everything we will uh, meditate more on all those things okay so yeah l- learn the old testament books no right now you do one thing just follow on the judges get the list of judges and all okay my charge is going to go off i don't have a plug point uh yeah, there's internet connected to the existing plug point so we do one thing okay we close now shall i pray for you and close okay i will do a small prayer father in heaven i want to thank you for your children oh god i surrender your children into your hands even as we have meditated your word be with them oh master god prosper them bless them oh god show them your love and concern today we are we have done an excellent bible study i pray that even they, they when they open the book of master god of father of the